What up Chanel? Just doing this video to show you the apartment that I am leaving. Uh, it's too bad I can't stay here. I'm actually, like I said, I have to move because they didn't move a whole bunch of niggas on this property that appear to be on drugs. I don't know how they making money selling drugs, whatever, but none of them work. All the males don't work. The women stay at home. Um, got kids on welfare what have you and none of the males in this community work and so I go out to work to my first job I come home go to my second job and I got the same niggas looking at me walk out my crib that look at me when I walk out later on to my other job now it's not like I worry about them they actually scared me but that's another story truth be told but these fools outside my crib, they talking loud all day from sun up to sundown. Nothing to do. It's nothing I can't stand in the whole motherfucking world but a nigga who don't do shit, that don't work. That just sit up around and lay around his woman. I can't stand that shit. And we at, and this neighborhood is full of. Now, when I first moved to this apartment, it wasn't like that. It was peaceful. I didn't hear no noise. It wasn't nobody outside talking. It wasn't no loitering. It wasn't no bumping speakers, rattling window, wasn't none of that going on. And all of a sudden, about six months ago, it's like the whole, it's almost like a new drug came into the community because everybody's acting up. So I said, you know what, I'm out of here and I'll be out of here February 1st. Tripped out thing about it, I got mad because I thought I was supposed to be out two weeks ago. But it turns out the apartment that I'm moving into, uh, which is mostly Spanish people living on that property, and it's so tripped out. I was telling somebody the other day, I said, you know, I'm sick of niggas. I'm sick of them. Everywhere you go, ain't no peace. It's true. I guess I'm white now because I'm sick of fucking niggas sitting around doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Just that kind of shit. But uh, I had this. This is a nice two bedroom, two bathroom. Damn, I wish I could stay. I love this apartment. But anyway, the next apartment I move into is a one bedroom because I said, you know what, I don't even need two bedrooms. I might as well downsize, pay less, and save more money. Okay, so this next one bedroom I'm getting is $500, which is a trip. I can't wait to show you that bedroom because this one bedroom is $500 clean and it's almost just as big as this apartment. And it got a balcony to barbecue. It's crazy. Prices in Vegas are very cheap. Very, very cheap. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to do the review of the apartment that I'm leaving. Um, this is actually like a condo style apartment. I moved here. You know, like I said, I like it a lot. Please excuse the mess because most of the stuff is gone. Or in my car. So everything is a mess because you know how it is when you're moving out. So we're just going to do this. This is the second bedroom. This is actually why I sleep. I have to move my stuff from the living room to the second bedroom because of all the noise that's being made in the living room. Motherfuckers talking outside, they sound like they in my living room. I mean, you talk about, you just want to go outside and kill them. I'm telling you, you just want to go out there and kill them. Kill them all. Don't even say nothing. Don't even complain. Just come out there just, just spraying niggas. But anyway, this is the second bedroom. Um, funny thing about me, I've always slept on the air bed. Always. I've slept on air beds since I moved to Vegas. And that sounds crazy. Now, I used to always have a bed, you know. Always. You know, and then when I first moved out here, I, I bought an air bed, which only cost like $25. I have to replace them every six months, though, because they, they um, you know, they uh, lose the air in about six months. So $25 for a clean, sanitary bed, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'll be honest with you, air beds are the most comfortable beds <laughs> I have ever slept on. I mean, I be dreaming in these things, you know. And uh, it's funny because, you know, I study a lot of esoteric knowledge. And one of my teachers was saying how the bed, you know, those coral metal springs, how they interfere with the body's ability to function properly while you're sleeping. You know, the metal in the bed. They said if you get a bed... You have to get a wood bed because the wood doesn't interfere with your cells. You know, your body is energy. So you got to figure if you got metal coils in your bed, I mean, goddamn, I ain't trying to scare nobody. But they can they can transfer thoughts and messages from the goddamn cell phone towers to your bed. I know that sounds crazy, but you better start listening to Chip because I know what the hell I'm talking about. 
anyway so yeah I've always slept on air beds and I think they're cleaner you know I mean I know some people they got these mattress covers and stuff but to me uh, sleeping on the air bed and replace them every six months I mean it's, it's just clean it's sanitary and like I said just the comfort level um, this is my lovely red couch can't see it very much but this is a very pretty couch I bought and uh, yeah very unfortunate so this is a two bedroom two bad just gonna do a quick thing this is a uh, you know you got two full bedrooms two full baths you know it's um uh, it helps because when you do when you have visitors you know you always knew that they'd be out of your way if you did have visitors so I'm leaving the second bedroom this is a second full bathroom This is a second bedroom. And this living room, this is the living room. I love the living room because as you see, it has like these wood ceilings. This is actually like a condo type style apartment. That's the thing in Vegas, whether you get in an apartment or a house, it always has more detail to it than a Chicago. You know, Chicago, they have a lot of old, old buildings. That's the thing about Chicago. A lot of old buildings. Now, these ceilings are really high, but this is the living room. I used to have my all my stuff in here before I had to move it out. But uh yeah, I used to have uh, I still got one candle holder left, but this living room used to be hooked the fuck up. I hate I had to move my stuff. But I had candle holders all over it, picture frames, you know. But this is a condo style apartment. If you see, you got central air. You know, most of the apartments I had in Chicago had radiators. And if you did get someplace in Chicago that had central air, you know, they was charging over damn near one thousand dollars just to have an upgraded apartment. So you know how Chicago is. But yeah, this is such a cozy living room just because of these wood ceilings. Uh, moving along. So this apartment. You know, it's a pretty big apartment. It's a pretty big apartment. You know, again, two bedroom, two full baths. Now I'm gonna walk over here to the kitchen and I'm making my first meal of the day. I'm gonna go through how to, excuse me, I'm gonna go through how to make this McDonald's milkshake again because, and again, forgive the mess. I'm gonna wash this blender out. But uh, I'll go over the ingredients with you on how to make a McDonald's milkshake. First, you got your coconut palm sugar, you got your coconut oil. This is all organic. I only shop organic. I just bought this today, vanilla. You know, usually I don't put vanilla in, in the milkshake, but I said I'm gonna do it today. This stuff is very expensive, it's amazing. I mean, this is like ten dollars just for a little small thing of vanilla. Vanilla is not cheap. And you got the ground nutmeg, and then we got ground cinnamon. And I gotta wash this out. Yeah, and just to remind you again about the bananas. These bananas, they're pretty ripe, but uh, you can get them riper. But you see, you know, in order to make a good um, milkshake tastes like McDonald's, I say it tastes better than McDonald's. You gotta make sure the bananas looking like that and soft. So I'm just gonna use four. But yeah, I can eat about 10 bananas a day. That's no problem for me. Yeah, a lot of people are struggling to eat. You know, so many people are not doing the right things. Because so many people are not doing the right things these days. They worried about what their family gonna think. 
they worry about what friends and family gonna think about them. They won't make moves because they always worry. They they basically live off other people's energy. They worry about what other people think about them and stuff. Look, until you start worrying about what other motherfuckers thinking about you, you you ain't going no goddamn way. And I'm not talking to you personally. I'm just talking about people in general. I mean, take it from me. I told you my story, and I still got videos to upload to you about that story. But, and even my master teachers say this. Your life will not improve until you stop giving a fuck about what people think. Sometimes we try to convince ourselves that we don't give a fuck about what people think, but we really do. You see what I'm saying? Remember, actions speak louder than words. You know, I came out here, I said, fuck the world. I said, my life ain't improving in Chicago. I said, my parents got a house, they got two cars, they got their shit together. Why I don't have my shit together? And I said, you know what? This is not true. Now, I'll tell you a short story about, you know, our parents. When I say our parents, I'm not just talking about ours, me and yours, because I'm talking about just the generation of people. You know, I went to college for about eight years. And the reason I didn't get my degree because I saw it was all bullshit. They, you know, you go to school, they don't teach you how to own businesses. They teach you how to be a slave, you know, to capitalism. So I said, fuck school. But, you know, I did learn, you know, um, a lot of things in school. Met a lot of people and probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if I didn't go to school. Cause, just because I was in a certain state of mind. But just getting back to the point, you got to do what you got to do for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to do what you got to do for yourself. You're giving a think about what people going to think, what people going to say. You ain't going nowhere. Believe me, you won't go nowhere. If I gave a fuck about what people think, I'd still be back in Chicago right now. Probably, God, I don't know what. Living up under some woman, suffering. You know, that girl I told you I was with, you know, the fashion designer slash model, whatever. You know, most niggas would be like, damn, you know, I got a pretty girl. She, she, you know, she cook, she do all this, that, she, that girl actually did cook for me, but it was all the wrong food, that shit had me sick, but, um, anyway, people, think about how many niggas would have said, okay, I got a beautiful woman, my parents like her, uh, she, you know, she had a mom, her, she, she came from Wisconsin, her mom had acres, she, her dad sported her to death, they used to send groceries back to her, like, she'd go home, come back with, like, $300 for the motherfucking groceries in the trunk, and she would call me, oh, come downstairs, help me with the groceries. I'd be like, this girl, you a sport than a motherfucker. And so there I was. I was simply suffering without no job, on unemployment, barely getting anything. And I had to move in with this girl, which was crazy because I always did for myself. I don't believe in no nigga moving in with no woman. If you don't have your own shit together, I tell niggas don't fuck with no goddamn woman until you got your shit together. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather be alone. But um, think about how many niggas would have been like, Oh shit, I'm gonna go ahead and live with this woman. You know, she's spoiled by her parents, she got money. I'm just gonna sit here, you know, that's okay, I lost my job. I'm just gonna sit here and benefit off her benefit. I said, fuck that shit. I don't benefit off no goddamn body but myself. Alright? So I'm sitting up there with this woman and she couldn't believe. She's like, I'm beautiful, you know, any guy wanna be with me? I told her, I said, look, this is not the way I do things. I say, I gotta go to Las Vegas. Because I know I do well there. I cannot live with you and, and be like this sitting, you know, in bed all motherfucking day. She come home, put the key in the door. I'm like a fucking dog scratching. You see, you got some women that like that fucking bullshit. They like a nigga not to be successful. Why? Because, I don't know, maybe because of jealousy. Maybe because they know they have to compete with other women if they nigga is out making money doing what he's supposed to be doing. You see, again, a lot of women, you know, I was talking about this with Rollo the other day. A lot of women love these simp ass niggas. They love them. Oh, he gonna be he gonna be right where I, where I want him to be. He gonna be right there. Nah, fuck that shit. A real man fucking takes care of his business and don't be thinking about no goddamn women. Lord will send you a woman when you supposed to be with a woman. But uh, anyway, just to get off that, um, again, you know, gotta get to the point in life where you're not thinking about what other people thinking. You know. Especially for a woman like yourself, you have children now, you definitely can't be thinking about what other motherfuckers thinking. You, you gotta think about your own, for sure. I don't even have kids, and I know that shit. But, uh, yeah, so just wanted to give you a short story about that, and uh, let's go ahead and put this McDonald's recipe together. I don't drink tap water, I only drink distilled water.
Uh, I try to get Fiji too when I'm out and about. I like Fiji water a lot. But I got a little tap water in this blender, so kind of rinse that out a little bit with the clean water. All right. But uh, yeah, if you don't make this milkshake recipe right, it won't taste like you like it's supposed to taste. So that's why I'm like, okay, let me just make a video. All right. Now, I'm just going to kind of, again, free pour this. Hold on for a minute. All right. I'm just going to kind of free pour this. But I'm going to tell you, I will say about, about two tablespoons of sugar. And it don't matter what order you put it into. Um, I'm going to put some of this vanilla. Like I said, normally I don't use vanilla, but today I will since it is a vanilla McDonald's milkshake recipe. And I say, you know, this stuff is real strong, so you just want to use it a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take some cinnamon powder. I say about um, half a tablespoon of cinnamon. All right. I'm running out of nutmeg, but you do about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Like right now, I hear these niggas outside. I'm in the kitchen, right? These niggas are outside. I hear them talking. They don't have no jobs. The uh, one below me, and all they do is t talk shit outside my motherfucking window all day long. I kid you not about nothing. Talking about nothing. Talking about what I'm doing. That's what they talking about. Bitch made ass niggas. Always looking at me and shit. I come by my career. Oh, you look like Gary Payton. You look like Gary Payton. Shut the fuck up, nigga. Stop looking at me. Stop looking at what I'm motherfucking doing. I can't stand a fucking bitch, nigga. He like a woman. All he do, he, he looking at what other niggas doing. He ain't looking at women. No, he looking at other niggas. Fucking faggots. Anyway. I'm a, uh, Okay, I got four bananas. Hold on for a minute. I'm still here. Just gotta get this shit together. Alright. Alright, back. Man, already this stuff smell good. It's that vanilla. I mean, I didn't I haven't been using vanilla for a while. I said I'm gonna get some vanilla today. I'm gonna be an uppity class Negro. Get me some goddamn expensive vanilla. I say about um let's see I got four bananas in here. Uh I say about a half a cup of water. Not too much water, but just a half a cup. All right. Oh, gotta do the coconut oil. This stuff, you gotta get down with this organic coconut oil. This stuff is expensive. This costs seventeen dollars. I use it in about a week. So you talking about this nigga right here? I spend like eighty dollars a month just on oil. I don't use any other oil. I don't care if it's frying, you know, uh, whatever. Okay, so I say about. I like a lot of coconut oil, so I say about um, two tablespoons, two tablespoons of coconut oil. I love coconut oil, I'm telling you. It's the best oil to use, I mean, especially for frying. A lot of people don't know that they have a lot of health problems because they're using, they keep messing with cooked oil that ain't supposed to be cooked. Coconut oil can be cooked at high temperatures. The molecular structure, I'm getting a little scientific here, the molecular, excuse me, a molecular structure does not change. When you fry coconut oil, you can deep fry. And you can use it over and over again, you know. See, black folks don't know. You're actually not supposed to be using oil over again. Unless it's like either peanut oil or coconut oil. Hold on. That's it. Those are only two oils. You can actually fry with and reuse the oil. Maybe like five times. It's coconut oil and peanut oil. That's it. Every other oil, you use it once and you have to throw that shit out. Because it becomes rancid. All right. So this is our recipe, okay? Tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon of coconut palm sugar, 
quarter teaspoon nutmeg, ha uh, teaspoon, half teaspoon of cinnamon, um, teaspoon, excuse me, a half a teaspoon of vanilla, half a teaspoon, excuse me, half a tablespoon of cinnamon powder, and two tablespoons of coconut oil. So we'll do this again. A tablespoon, a heaping tablespoon of coconut palm sugar, a, um, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a heaping teaspoon of cinnamon powder, teaspoon of vanilla extract powder, liquid, and two tablespoons of coconut oil. We got four very ripe bananas. We got half a cup of water. And that's it. Time to blend. I'm back so yeah so yeah cuz I just you know you cannot think about what other people think about you that's why to believe it or not a lot of people never get to where they need to be in life notice I said I didn't say where they want to be I said a lot of people don't get to where they need to be in their life because they always worry about what people think about them that's the shit that's holding a whole bunch of motherfuckers up in their life I'm telling you, I'm dropping some real shit right here. That's the real shit. People don't get where they need to be because they worried about what motherfuckers think. Alright? I don't give a fuck about what people think. You know, I'm going to do the best for me and mine. Alright? Anyway, getting back to it. Now, one thing I want to add about this McDonald's milkshake recipe is that it's room temperature. Okay? Do not do the fridge thing. Do not put ice in it, okay? The ice is not good for you. Cold liquids is not good for you. I'll tell you that why another time. You want to do this room temperature, okay? That's where it's going to taste good. All right, so I do a room temperature. And I just say, I mean, you want to have a cold experience? All right, get you one of these stainless steel cold straws. There you go. There goes something cold. I can put this phone to the window, you hear these bitch ass niggas talking. Alright. This is so good. Let me tell you something. Because if you're, I mean, thing is, when you have leaky gut syndrome, you have to know how to cook. You have to know how to be able to season because you can't eat a lot of things. You know, if I cook a steak, like I go to Whole Foods, I get a grass fed steak. Um, you know what I'm saying? Grass fed steak, come home, I'll cook it. And you got to know how to cook. When you have health issues, you got to know how to cook. Um, honestly, I don't think leaky uh, gut syndrome is necessarily a health issue because when you do the research on it, doctors don't even really know what it is. You know what the fuck I say it is? I think it's the spirit world telling you, look, you're not supposed to be eating this kind of food, and that's what it is. Because I tell you, when I read Elijah Muhammad's book, which is How to Eat to Live, Not to Live to Eat, all the stuff that I can't eat in that book, we're not supposed to be eating anyway. So I don't really say I have a health issue with leaky gut. No, I'm eating what the natural human body is supposed to eat. We're not even supposed to be eating grains. We're not even supposed to be eating potatoes. We're not supposed to be eating dairy. All that shit is in that book. All right, real talk. So, man, I tell you, because if your daughter's... So that egg sandwich I fixed, too bad you didn't try it because... Them girls knew what the fuck I was. <laughs> they knew they knew what the deal was. He's like, wait a minute, we had motherfuckers fix us an egg sandwich before, but damn, this nigga's egg sandwich is the shit. Damn, that's because you gotta know how to cook. So even though grandma only had like some butter, 
She had some butter. She had a little bit of thing of bread left, a few eggs left. She barely had any ingredients left, but I hooked that, that shit up to taste like, oh my God. And so your girls knew that. But can you imagine if they tasted this shake? Oh man, they would have sent the bloodhounds after me. Anyway, yeah. Only thing that would have made that egg sandwich taste better that grandma didn't have, that would have made it like, oh my God, is this coconut oil i have to use the oil grandma had but if i had to use coconut oil you wouldn't talk you would have been talking about a fried egg sandwich that would like have this salt tea sweet taste to it and yeah your girls would have went crazy but anyway i'm about to sign off you know this is what i'm eating my first meal of the day and of course my five dollar tuna which they got okay you notice this tuna it says please don't drain that's because this tuna doesn't contain any water in it. They want you to drink the liquid because it has like this healthy omega-3 shit in it. So, but this is the $5 tuna. So I have a can of tuna. All right. And, you know, I hook my tuna up too. I got what I put on the tuna is just garlic powder, organic. Everything I buy is organic, even the season, organic ground pepper. And uh, I'll use Himalayan salt, which is this stuff right here full of minerals yeah, everything I have is organic. I don't use honey on my tuna obviously I'm just showing you everything I got is organic but that's what I'll eat for breakfast all right I'm signing off cuz I hope you enjoyed this vid and uh, yeah peep game on what I said all right peace